Hello, gentle viewers. This is Vendian, welcoming you to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 18. The pundits of baseball, they look at the Browns and say, this is one of the worst teams in the American League. And it's not hard to see why they think so. We don't have the big thumper right now. Um, and apparently Cleveland's got three of them, which is crazy. Boston's got two. Um, the White Sox have two. We have zero. Boudreaux's really, really good, but he's not an elite hitter. And then we've got our good friend, uh, Bob Feller. So that's the thing. I have reason to believe they're underestimating us, in particular because of Larry French. But I would not be shocked if we lost a bunch of games this season. But there's only one way to find out. Last episode, we set up our lineup and our pitching staff. Kind of seemed like last episode ran longer than I anticipated. I think it's, I think I got distracted talking about things. Um, which is, after all, why you're watching me instead of playing the game yourself. Right? You should be playing it yourself. But that's fine. Um, Dick Bartell got hit 2,500. Very nice. This is much more impressive, though. 3,000 hits for Woody English. Did Woody English get Player of the Week? He did. Nice work. Nice work indeed. You know, we are kind of toward the basement. But, like, no one's separating themselves from the pack this season. So there's still a very good chance that we'll be able to make something happen. Unless, of course, we lose Woody English. So this creates a problem. Maybe an opportunity to... Maybe a problem tunity. So Woody English is out for three to four weeks. There's no question at all we put him on the disabled list. <coughs> but what do we do in the short term? Bob Mabus is much closer to being Major League ready. But if I put him at second and I move Bartell to short, am I making the team that much better? Bartell's having a pretty great season. So that's option one. We call up Mavis. I shift Bartell to second, to short. And then either Salty Parker or Mavis play second for the rest of it until English is healthy. That's the smart play. The adventurous play is that we play George Wilson. Who's developed a little bit in spring training. Um, his contact got better and his eye got better. His potential's dipping a little bit, but he's still a great shortstop. And there's still potential thunder in his bat. But I'm not ready to anoint him the future yet. So I think we take the less risky play. We call up Bob Mavis. And we're going to shift um, uh, Bartell over to shortstop for the rest of the season. So just so we don't get 10,000 people bugging us, we're going to shift you to short. Now, the real question is who plays second? Mavis has a future. Parker's presence a tiny bit brighter. But I think we give Mavis the shot. We haven't let a rookie... Oh, good lord. I did not copy anything over. We will actually adjust the lineup. But for now, I just want to get people out here. There we go. Bob Mavis is not leading off. Um, I'll actually let Bartell lead off. And that'll put a little bit less pressure on Mavis to succeed. Mavis isn't really... Mavis is just playing for a job. He's not playing to replace anybody. Because Bartell's not going anywhere until he starts to decay. And so far it looks like he wants to keep playing. Okay.
George O'Quinn wants to start. Well, we'll take a look and see how what's his what's his face is doing. Salty Parker wants to start. We're not bad enough for everyone to start jumping ship on the team. Siebert's actually hitting pretty damn well. He's got absolutely no power, but he's getting on base. And that's really what we need from a first baseman. So I'll keep going, and I'll just ignore you guys for now. Yeah, we are kind of bottoming out. Uh, English is going to need himself a day. A few extra days. Yeah, we are kind of bottoming out. Now Ethan Allen wants to be traded. Fitcher. I thought it said Pitcher Fitch's shutout. And I was like, oh, it's Fitcher Pitcher shutout. 25 games for Boudreaux's. Aw, oh, stupid Yankees. What is going horribly wrong this season? Really nothing. We should be a lot better than we are. Um, what does our Pythagorean standings look like? We should be over 500 right now. Because you've got a positive run differential. It's not perfect, but it's good. I don't know what we can do to really change the team, though. Ahem... <clears throat> I wonder if this is Larry French finally starting to decay. Stupid Warnicky. No one likes you, Warnicky. Oh, Christ. Boston called up Del Enos. You know, Boston, I'm sick of your crap. You need to start sucking. And stop getting all these amazing players. Um... Ooh, French just hit the wall this season, and I mean he hit it hard. Yeah, French is done. Reed or Scotland? Reed. We'll see what kind of career you have in middle relief, French, but wow. You've just, you've absolutely collapsed. It's sad, but you won 240 games. You still might make the Hall of Fame. Okay, that right there will help a bit. I'll let everyone else there do okay. How are we doing with the lineup? Demery's not looking great because he's not hitting for contact. Come on, mate. You're here to hit for average, and you're not doing it. How about you try doing it? That he's gonna. Oh my God, try. It all makes sense now. I think Sauer's doing good in home runs this season. We could bring Woody English back. How's Mavis doing at second? Not so great. Okay. Back to triple A. Back to second. Back to short stop. Yeah, Woody English, you can have your number two spot back. Because Demery is already looking like he's a bust. I don't think we'll get fired. I think we still got another year on our contract. I doubt they'll fire me for that. But I don't know. Another thing I'd like to see them add for 2019. Make it clear when news applies to your team. Like bold it or something. Ooh, 1,500 career wins as a manager. Nice. It doesn't matter a damn, because I'm pretty sure we're still, we're still hot garbage this year. 
Yeah, we're in sixth. We're pretty bad. And we just lost Sours for five weeks. Wilson kicked up another notch, didn't he? Yeah, his power's starting to come around. Okay. There is some hope for the future. It's not infinite hope, but it's there. I'm just going to let Doc Kramer play. I'm not going to put him on the DL. We just don't have the depth. And honestly, at this point, we're actually better just crapping the bed. And trying to get, like, a top five pick. Because that might push us back over the top. Who's complaining? Oh, you're not real happy, are you? I don't know why I'm trying to speak like I'm Irish. I'm not. Bob Feller, Clyde Schoon, Jim Turner. Even Boudreaux couldn't crack, crack the top ten. Okay, just pitchers. Why do I have the feeling that Bob Feller's going to be the guy for us? By which you mean the one who gets to go to the All-Star game every year while everyone else doesn't? Salty probably wants to be traded. <laughs> Why would I give a guy who can't hit a starting job? I'll shop you around, mate, but I got a feeling no one's going to want you. If they do want you, I'm not going to get anything good for it. I don't need Pinky. I don't need a player who can't play anymore. Why are you grumpy? I saw something about why you're grumpy. You think someone on the team is slacking. Well, it is very possible. Let's look at team chemistry. You don't like Ethan Allen. And Ethan Allen's been hot garbage. So you know what? Let's cut him. Wait, is he popular? He's not that popular. Let's just continue for now. I don't really want to get messed up with the chemistry stuff. And it's not like it's going to matter much anyway. I think the problem is our old players are getting old. Now who wants to be traded? Now you want Bowser traded. Well, I've got an idea. Shut up. That's my counter-argument. Well, we just lost Bob Feller for six weeks. And I don't have a pitcher that's ready. I have George Jenkins. Let's go ahead and bring in Stalin. Not to be confused with Stalin. Larry French is super popular. I don't know if I have the guts to just cut him. But that might be what's best for his career. Which is really sad. Let's go up to roster expansion. This might be a short season. This is going to be a short season. It's just lost. Now the key is that we get someone that's really terrific. We need young talent to build around. And right now we're looking at Oh, we started winning. Damn it. My we just kept losing. Shut up, Ethan Allen. Literally, I have... I could not... I could not care less about what you have to say. I need something. I need this pick to hit to get us back into contention. Another 25 game streak for Boudreaux. But the tank got a matter. Yeah. That was terrible. I don't know why I'm trying to do accents or not. I'm always bad at accents. I think it's despair. 
despair over how bad we've become all of a sudden. Get back in that rotation. How popular Larry French is super popular. I can't just cut him. Someone's a disruptive influence and it's dragging the rest of the team down. It's probably me, to be honest. I mean, I have, like, openly told them to lose more games. That's probably very disheartening. But I want that top five pick. I don't even care if I get fired. Well, actually, I would care if I got fired. You know what, Salty Parker? I'm sick of your crap. You say that there's disruptive influences because it's you. Because you won't shut up about not starting. I'm not benching one of the legitimately great players on this team. It doesn't matter. The season's almost over anyway. I'm not benching one of the greater, play, better players on this team just to suit your ego. You can go screw yourself. Right now our pick would be number four. Now who's complaining? Mike Bowser. I'm not dealing anybody I don't want to deal, so shut up. Just seriously. Do we really just win our way out of the top out of the out of a top five spot? I think we might well have done. Let's look at the team. What went well this year, if anything? Bartel Boutros, Sour Campbell. <clears throat> Bartel was really good this year. Boudreaux continues to put in just another outstanding season. How many home runs did Sour crack? 26. And Campbell had a nice little bounce back here after he was injured a good piece in last season. Woody English has now put together two subpar years. Not bad years, but subpar. Sears was good. Siebert was pretty solid. Compared to what I'm used to getting. Um, our lineup wasn't that bad, was it? We were second in batting average. We were second in run score. Our pitching staff fell apart. That's to be expected. How good was Felder this year? I bet he still led the league in strikeouts, even with missing the, like, six starts. Maybe not. Well, I think we'll take this one right into the offseason, especially since we're going to be getting a high draft pick. We need to figure out what to do with Larry French. The Pirates won again. It was the Pirates last year, too. Okay, one of my players retired. Who retired? <clears throat> Larry French, you know what, mate? I don't blame you. So, who disappeared? And are any of them people I really care about? Not really. What do we got for free agency this year? I could get Mel Ott now that he's 35. No thanks. Lou Finney is a decent hitter. Kinda, sorta. You know what? I'm kinda tired of getting sucked into this crap. I'm not gonna spend money in free agency. One player's not gonna turn us around. Not even Glenn McQuillan. He's never had a proper shot in the majors. No. I'm not going to sign a single free agent. That's not how we're going to upgrade this team. We're going we're gonna to make a splash in the draft. <clears throat> we did lead the league in strikeouts. As I said, we would. Let's look at some awards. 
George Wilson finished third in the MVP race. Top gloves. No one important. Jim Turner won reliever of the year again. Which I think he's won a bunch of times. Silver Slugger. Oh, Lou Boudreau came home with one. Very nice. Oh, Rookie of the Year. Bob Peller didn't even play, so he did get hurt quite a bit. Ted Williams won another MVP. How many MVPs has Ted Williams won? Two, three. He's won six. He's won bloody six. What are his all times? What are his like all time stats right now? This is obscene. He started at seventeen. He's like destroying pitching. Ugh. You're too good, damn it. Why don't you take it down a notch? Stupid Ted Williams being all awesome. And yet, Boston hasn't won a single World Series since he's been with them, I don't think. We need at least two more players. And Wilson might be one of them. This honestly might be Woody English's time to maybe take a step back. Which would really suck. Because I kind of like Woody English. Both because I drafted him high and because he's had such a great career for us. But it, the future has to come, right? You can't keep holding it back. And I think he's my future shortstop. I don't think he's going to be a mega star, but I think he's going to be a star. And I think he's got nothing left to learn in AAA. So I think we very seriously consider Wilson's stats in spring training. Not as literal statistics, because spring training stats are junk. But spring training is, to be honest, a time for players to get their shit together more than anything else. Okay, let's look at the draft pool. Richie Ashburn is the only truly great player in this collection that I can tell. Some of these players are genuinely bad. And yet they're being projected a top pick. There aren't five good players in this draft, are there? It's Richie Ashburn, Billy Pierce, and a bunch of garbage. This is the worst possible draft to have. A great pick. I did it again. I don't know how I always do it, but I did it again. Um... How has center field been for us? He'd actually drag it down a bit. But he's almost worth 60 war for his career. And I think that is worth at least one vote. I say that and then there's Showboat Fisher who I didn't even vote for. I don't care about him. He don't do it for me. I'm going to go ahead and cast about for Harden. I don't think we have very many catchers in right now. Deacon Danny McFadden? No. No. I will vote for Jakey e. May just for old time's sake. Okay, Bucket Foot Al genuinely belongs in the Hall of Fame. Not you, Bill Terry. And you don't belong in the real one either. Because he's a catcher, I'll also cast a quick ballot for Hack Wilson. But only because he's a catcher. We might have like three or four people get elected this season. That'd be kind of neat. I can't believe of all the years to have a top draft pick. I'm stuck in this draft. This is just an awful draft. And I don't know what to do. Except maybe punt the next season too 
and try to get two players in the draft. Because I'm not wasting a top five pick on anything short of a possible star. And I don't know that there are five stars in this draft. I don't know that there's three stars in this draft. Duke Snyder didn't sign. Oh my god, I'd be so... I would be so elated if I could grab Duke Snyder. I'd even take Richie Ashburn, to be honest. I don't know if I'd keep him at shortstop, but I'd definitely take him if I could get him. The problem is, this is a three-player draft, and I've got the fourth pick. Let's see what happens. I've got the sixth pick. There's no way. Freaking Giants. Oh, because you didn't sign Snyder. Why the hell not? <coughs> How do you have a chance at a Duke Snyder and not sign him? It just blows my mind. Blows my mind. Yeah, there's not going to be a great player left for me. Yep. Steve Bilko is as good as it gets. And Steve Bilko hits for power and he draws walks. I don't care who I draft. I'm not signing them. It feels weird, doesn't it, to say I have a top six pick and I'm not going to draft anyone. But Steve Bilko isn't worth it. Even if this gets me fired, the best thing we can do with this pick is not draft anyone and wait for a draft that's a little bit deeper. Like Mickey McDermott is a decent pitcher, but he's not great. I will. I don't actually care who we draft. I'm not going to sign my first round pick. I would rather have it next season. When the draft might be deeper. Yeah, I don't want you, Steve Bilko. Al Kaiser. You've got a decent amount of power. I will sign you. I don't mind losing a second round pick, but I'm not giving a sixth. I'm not wasting a sixth overall pick. Um, sure, I'll take a bullpen guy. How many third round picks that I have this year? One, two, three, four, five, six. People probably like just sign some. Billy Gardner can't hit. Rob Witcher's a decent pitcher, I guess. I can sign him too. I'm being I'm being weirdly insistent on signing these players who actually aren't super awesome. Fred Leonard, you can't play, you can't catch. Tom Lasorda. That's a Hall of Fame pick. I'm certainly not going to give you what you think you deserve, though. Now, this is going to be another quiet offseason. is isn't because I think we're going to be better this season without making the draft picks. That's not the point. The point is that I have a sixth overall draft pick, and I'm not drafting a star with it. And it's not anyone's fault, except for the, the class's fault. Because that's a super tight... And it's because the same the other teams are doing the same thing I'm doing, which is if they see the draft isn't very deep, and if there's not an elite player, they don't take them. I don't know why on earth the Giants didn't sign Duke Snyder last year. Unless they just couldn't afford him. Only two players got inducted? I miss Chick Hafey. How is he in our version of baseball? Not that great. A good career, though. <laughs> Suck it, pie trainer.
Yeah, St. Louis Browns. Woo Yet more good days than bad days. Isn't that all we can really hope for? <coughs> I made a very controversial decision, and it'll only hold up. It's not that even Bill Cub was bad. I kind of liked him. But it's just... I could have had greatness if I'd been two picks earlier. And I'd just rather wait for there to be a pick, one, a draft when I've got two elite players instead of just one. Now, this might get me fired. It very well might get me fired. And if it does get me fired, it gets me fired. And there's nothing I can do about that. Except maybe take over another team and try to guide them to glory. There's always that temptation. Okay, spring training. Did you kill my double-A team again? Okay, no, you didn't. Art McCaskey. Oh, yeah. I remember drafting you. Okay, Georgie boy. I'm putting you on the roster. I could put him in left field, but that would be kind of a waste given how amazing a shortstop he is. And Woody English is honestly at the point in his career where he should be playing less of a role anyway. So I think... Uh, is there anyone else I want to give a, a, a real shot to? Wow, my second rounder is already ready to play in the majors. At least he's as ready as he's ever going to be. I need... An outfielder, and I think Elmer Gideon is going to be that outfielder. I want you to keep working on that discipline, because if you can regularly draw walks, you'll be far more useful to me. Let's finish spring training. I think we'll end the episode after this off season. I know this won't be nearly as long as the last episode was, but... What kind of trade proposal are you making? For a pretty good shortstop, you're offering me an objectively bad catcher who might someday hit for power. That's kind of a bad deal. Well, Woody English has just decided. I can't prove he did that on purpose. Woody English is just like, nah, let the rookie play. Oh yeah, I didn't even tell him to let you be the everyday player, did I? Well, the AI is going to figure it out PDQ. So, the one thing that we have is Bob Feller. And all it's going to take is him putting things into overdrive. No. Just no. I would never make that deal in a thousand years. What is it about him you think that I'll take your garbage for? These are not good players. And I totally get that Scheib isn't that thrilling, but at least he has value. You have none. Stop it. 
stop making these ridiculous offers. If you offered me something interesting, I'd probably make the deal. But you just keep offering me these worthless players. At least Bobby Wilson's a good second baseman, but he doesn't hit. I can be picky. And I'm gonna be picky. I might actually win spring training. Holy shit. That'll kind of bite me on the ass, won't it? I mean, I'm hoping for... I'm already hoping for a draft that's got depth. But if... If I can't get my two picks in the top ten, that was kind of what I was banking on. We'll see what happens. Okay, so you want me to reach the playoffs. A tall order... But possible. Oh, he was the number five pick in all of baseball. Ah, Snyder and Hodges signed. Shit, look at that. Three in the top ten. Cleveland got Richie Ashburn. You buttholes. Nap Reyes. I never even heard of this guy. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and end the episode now. I'm going to purge the email so we can think about what we want to accomplish next season. This wasn't a great season. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. And I've made a very bold decision. And this is the last year of my contract. I'm already legendary. I'm going to try to get a new bench coach. Hank Sauer doesn't like him, but Lou Boudreau does like him. Let me go ahead and, and offer my pitching coach a new deal. Because he is a specialist in Bob Feller. Um, I'd really like a better, um, I'd really like a better bench coach, if I can find one. But let's set that to the side for now. So what do we think is going to happen this season? I can see one of two things happening. One, Bob Feller takes over, as only he can do. And guides us kicking and screaming to another World Series. That's option one. Option two. We fall apart. Completely and utterly. And somehow the draft still sucks. And so we don't actually gain anything from sucking. I don't know which is going to happen. I'll be honest. I'm a little bit concerned about... Bob Feller. Because right now, our franchise is stapled to him. No, no, no. Our franchise is riveted to him. No. It's like... Like nuclear fusion. If Bob Feller m falls apart, we are screwed. This is as good as it gets. Because we don't have an elite pitcher in our farm system. It's Feller, it's McLean, it's Reed. Harder starting to slip. And there's not much help on the horizon. So. We've only got one young player, George Wilson, who looks like he's going to be anything special. And in his case, it's going to be he's going to be such an amazing shortstop that any offense he provides, even if it's league average, is going to look amazing. And I think he can do league average. But if Wilson doesn't come through... Right now, we're a team built around two people, and one of those players has had a long injury history. I love Lou Boudreau. 
But he's he alone cannot carry this team to a World Series. He just can't. Which is a shame. But. Yeah, Dick Bartel's getting worse. We've spent a lot of resources and a lot of time signing up these older players. And it's very slowly starting to burn us. Um, and there's not an easy answer. Bruce Campbell, I think. This will be the first year he's not the cleanup guy. I want Sowers in as the cleanup guy. How many home runs has Hank Sauer hit in his career? 130. I thought he said 390. He's like, damn. But that's 130. Mm. We shall have to see what happens next time, my dear friends. But until then, this has been Avindian. I hope you like like the video. I hope you maybe send a subscription, maybe place a comment. Um, if we get fired, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna have a think about where we go next. Because I kind of miss contracts. I miss genuine free agency, and I just miss having extra sources of players. I miss scouting. There's things about the game that you don't get playing historically that maybe they'll add in OTP 19. Um, I've got ideas roaming around in my head. But I think we'll leave those for now. Until next time, this has been Avindian, and I bid you good day.